Hi guys, this is my 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro from all the way back in 2015. It's been a real workhorse for the last 7 years and it's edited hundreds of videos, but it is starting to show signs that it needs some TLC. It's idling at over 40 degrees C and it hits 99 degrees C within a few seconds when doing anything heavy like editing video. So today I'm going to be stripping it down, cleaning out all of the dust, replacing the thermal paste and hopefully getting it back to running like new again. To begin with I need to shut the Mac down, close the lid and disconnect the power. Before I flip it over to remove the base, I'm just putting down a soft cloth to prevent any scratches to the back of the lid. The base is held in place with 10 of Apple's proprietary Pentalo P5 screws. There are 4 at the front, 4 at the back and 1 on either side. With the screws removed I can lift up the bottom panel from the back. There are still a couple of plastic clips holding the base in the middle that need to be released. On the other side you can see all of the dust that's accumulated over the years. This will be wiped off with a damp paper towel and then left to dry. The motherboard is even worse, there's dust everywhere, especially in the areas around the fans and in the fans themselves. Before going any further I need to disconnect the battery from the motherboard to make sure that there's no power going to it. I peel up the sticker covering the connector and pry it up from the socket using an iFixit spudger. Now I'm going to use a nylon anti-static brush to clean off some of the dust from the surface of the board before I continue taking it apart. First I'm lifting up the rubber pieces from the top of the fans in preparation for removing the fans themselves. Before the right fan can be removed I need to take off the flat cable connecting the I.O. board to the motherboard. The connectors for this cable are covered with a small bracket held in place with torque screws. Now I have to disconnect the three antenna cables which are routed over the top of the right fan. Using the sharp end of a spudger I push straight up on the cables from below, disconnecting them from the Wi-Fi Bluetooth board. Then I can disconnect the webcam cable from the socket on the motherboard by sliding it straight back away from the socket. Just below this connector is the first of three screws holding the fan. With those screws gone, the fan connector can be slid back from its socket and the fan lifted out of the laptop. The fins on the heat pipe behind the fan are absolutely filled with dust. I'll be cleaning these properly after removing the heat pipe, but for now I'll just brush off some of the worst. There are three more screws to remove from the left fan, and then that too can be released from its socket and lifted out. I've already cleaned off as much of the dust from the fans as I can from the outside with a brush, but to properly clean them I have to take them apart. The top cover is held on with three Phillips head screws. Once they've been removed it can be lifted off to reveal the fan blades underneath. I use a cotton pad dampened in isopropyl alcohol to clean the top cover and the casing, and then switch to a flattened Q-tip to clean each individual blade. This was the most time consuming part of the entire process, but with both fans eventually cleaned and reassembled, it's time to turn our attention to the heatsink. There's one screw on either side, the left one hidden away under a rubber cover. And then there are four more torque screws over the heatsink itself. These go through a pair of spring loaded metal brackets that apply tension to keep the heatsink pressed down against the CPU. Lifting off the heatsink reveals all of the dry, crusty 7 year old thermal paste underneath. This is no longer doing its job so it's time to clean it off and replace it. To remove it I'm using some q-tips and cotton pads dampened in isopropyl alcohol. After cleaning off the CPU, it's time to do the same with the copper heatsink. I start with a cotton pad, dampened in isopropyl alcohol, and then switch to some thermal surface purifier on a Q-tip to clean off all of that old paste and leave it looking as good as new. 
Now before reinstalling the fans and heat pipe, I'm going to clean the motherboard and exposed areas like the battery and speakers of all of the dust and grime that's built up over the years. After using a rocket blower to take off the loose surface dust, I switch to a mixture of cotton pads and q-tips with alcohol to give the whole interior a good clean. Finally, it's time to reinstall the CPU heat pipe. First, I give the CPU a few blows with the rocket blower to remove any dust that might have settled on there during the cleaning. Then, I apply some new thermal paste. Here I'm using Arctic Silver MX2, which should be good for several years before it needs to be replaced again. I lower the heatsink into place and reinstall the two metal brackets. When replacing the screws I use the same method I did when removing them, gradually tightening opposing corners a little at a time to avoid too much pressure in one place. Then I can replace the two screws at either end of the heat pipe and it's time to replace the fans. Starting with the left one I lower it back into place, slide the flex cable back into its socket and close the latch and finally replace the three screws. I do the same with the right fan and then it's time to replace the flex cable connecting the I.O. board to the motherboard along with its two retaining brackets. Then I can slide the webcam cable back into its socket, reroute the antenna cables over the fan and plug the connectors back into the Wi-Fi board. Before replacing the bottom case all that's left to do is to reconnect the battery and replace the sticker over the top of the connector. This is the lower case after cleaning and it's a vast improvement over what it looked like before. Now that all that dust has been removed it looks almost like new. Finally I just have to replace the 10 pentalobe screws on the lower case and we're done. So that's the MacBook back together again and looking pretty good for a machine that's almost 8 years old. As for the temperatures, it's idling about 8 degrees lower than before, reduced from nearly 40 to around 32. And although it still hits over 90 when under full load for sustained periods, it takes a lot longer to hit that point than before, meaning that it can work harder for longer without throttling. So it's ready to be put back to work editing video. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That's it for now, thanks for watching.